Hello dear viewer, this is Excel Science Tuition and today we are going to study criteria for purity. This is form 1 work, chemistry work and before we start I'd like to tell you something that when discipline is tied with commitment, when discipline is tied with commitment, success is a guarantee. So you should be disciplined and you should also be committed to your schoolwork and for sure you're going to success. I'd like to encourage you to continue learning and continue putting more effort and be disciplined and you will succeed. Let's start our lesson today. Move with me to the end of it and I shall appreciate you. Now we're going to start by defining what is a pure substance. A pure substance is a substance that contains only one type of an element or a compound. When you talk about a pure substance, we mean a substance that contains one type of an element. For example, if it is oxygen, we can say that oxygen is a pure substance because it contains only oxygen. Then we can say that air is a mixture because air contains nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and so on. So air is a mixture, while when you take just one component of air, for example nitrogen, we can say that nitrogen is a pure substance because it contains only one type of that substance. Then an element, we're going to define what is an element. An element is a pure substance that cannot be split into simpler substances by any chemical means. So an element is a pure substance. So we started these chemistry lessons by first defining what is matter. Then under matter, we mentioned that uh, we have pure substance and impure substances. Then under pure substances, we have what we call a compound and what we call an element. A compound is a pure substance that is made up of elements that can be separated by chemical means but cannot be separated by physical means while an element cannot even be separated by chemical means elements are further classified into two so we started by classifying matter then under matter we said there are pure substances and impure substances impure substances are what we call mixtures then under pure substances we have elements and compounds. Now, under elements, we have what we call metals and nonmetals. So we have two types of elements, metals and nonmetals. So we, examples of metals that exist as solid at room temperature include sodium, magnesium, aluminium, lead, iron, gold, tin, calcium, potassium, and so on. So those are some of the examples of metals. Most of them have a shiny luster. When you talk about a shiny luster, for example, aluminum, aluminum is the one that is used in making most of the cooking utensils. Aluminum is shiny. When we talk about gold, gold is also, is also shiny. When you talk about silver, silver is shiny. So metals have a shiny luster. When you reach another topic of periodic table and trends, we will learn why metals have a luster or why they are shiny. So these are some of the examples of metals at room temperature. Room temperature is always between 22 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius, depending on the altitude of the place that you are in. Then we have mercury. Mercury is also a metal, but it exists as a liquid at room temperature. So we have these ones that exist as solids, and then we have mercury that exists as liquid at room temperature. It is the one that is put in in 
thermometer in glass thermometers these thermometers that are available in the lab they use mercury because it is liquid at room temperature also we have nonmetals examples of nonmetals include carbon xenon chlorine fluorine nitrogen oxygen all of them are nonmetal they can be solid liquid or even gas so those are these two can be classified and can be called elements because elements are made up of metals and nonmetals and we have said that an element is a pure substance let's move on to the next now we're going to determine the criteria for purity criteria for purity is whereby we want to determine if a solid or a liquid is pure being pure we mean that it is made up of one substance we want to define to determine if that liquid or solid is made up of one substance so the purity of solids is determined by the melting point while the purity of liquids is determined by the boiling point so those are two key concepts for solids we determine using the melting point while for liquid we determine using the boiling points when heating or cooling the curve of a pure solid uh, has a sharp melting point over a narrow temperature range when we talk about a sharp melting point we mean that when we draw the curve uh, a heating or a cooling curve for a solid it will have a sharp point this is what you are talking about as the sharp point that one is what you call this one this sharp point is what you call this one is what will help us to determine if that substance is pure or impure we'll just look at the melting point and it has to be sharp it has to have a corner while if it is one for an impure substance we will have a melting point that is curved it will not be sharp so th th that is one factor to consider when we want to look at the purity of solids key point to note is that in solids we look at the melting point while in liquids we look at the boiling point example of melting points of substances mercury melts at negative 38.83 degrees celsius water melts at 0 degrees celsius naphthalene melts at 80 degrees celsius so these are just some of the examples of melting points we also have the boiling points the boiling point of water is 80 degrees so, uh, the boiling point of alcohol is 78 degrees so that is the boiling point of substances let's move to the next thing uh, we are asking ourselves what is the effect of impurities on the melting and boiling points what do impurities do to the melting and the boiling points so first you can note that impurities lower the melting point of a solid that is the first point impurities lower the melting point of a solid it makes the melting point not to be sharp it makes it to be curved so that is the first thing impurities lower the melting point for example when sodium chloride is added to ice it lowers the melting point so when you take sodium chloride is stable salt so when you take the, just the normal salt and you add it to ice the ice will start to melt faster or earlier than expected so thus it has lowered the melting point also you can note that impurities increase the boiling point of a substance when you talk about the boiling point we mean that the temperature at which the liquid boils or the liquids start to change to gas so impurities increase the boiling point so in, when we add impurities then it means that 
the water or the liquid will boil at a higher temperature. For example, sea water boils at a higher temperature than pure water due to the presence of salts. Sea water has salts and minerals dissolved in it. That is why it boils at a higher temperature. If normal pure water boils at 100 degrees centigrade, then sea water will boil at 105 or 110. It will increase the boiling point. While in metals or solids, it will lower the melting point. So those are the two things that you should note. So if you are asked in an exam, what is the effect of impurities on melting and boiling points? B, state that impurities lower the melting point uh, in solids, while impurities increase the boiling point of a substance. Let's move to the next thing. Now we're going to learn application of the effects of impurities. We have talked about lowering the melting point and increasing the boiling point. So how does lowering the melting point help us? So first, in, uh, the first application is that is def defrosting of frozen roads in temperate countries by pouring sodium chloride. During winter, in countries that are above the Tropic of Cancer and below the Tropic of Capricorn, those countries experience winter and sometimes the temperature goes to negative, negative below zero. So when the temperature gets there, the water freezes and becomes solid. And it may, be, it may become solid even on the surface of roads, therefore hindering movement of vehicles. So what do they do? They pour common salt or sodium chloride. What have we mentioned about, about impurities on solids? Impurities lower the melting point. So by pouring sodium chloride, we will be lowering the melting point and therefore the ice will melt earlier or the ice will melt at a lower temperature than expected. And thus, when it has melted, they will be able to move. Then the ne next, the second application is also about those temperate countries is that to prevent knocking of engines due to freezing water in car radiators during cold weather, impurities are added. So in cars, we have what you call radiators where water for cooling is stored. So during those cold weather, that water might freeze. So we add common salt or ethylene. We, these two are impurities. And when we add impurities, then that means that the water will not, will not freeze and knock the engine. Then the third application is extraction of metals. In order to use lower costs or in order to save on costs, impurities are added to metals, to metal ores to lower the melting point. For example, if we are extracting sodium and for example, the boiling point, the boiling point of sodium is, the melting point of sodium, let's say, is 3000 degrees Celsius. When we add impurities, we have said that it will lower the melting point. By lowering the melting point, then it means that we will need less energy to reach at that lower temperature than expected. And when we reach that lower temperature than expected, then that means that we will have conserved the, the energy. So that means that we will be saving on costs during the extraction of metals. Also, this one helps because it might be difficult to reach the point of melting because some metals have very high melting point. So it, it is necessary to add impurities to the already purified metal ores because during extraction of metals, you will learn that some metal ores are covered with, with mud and so on. So they first have to be cleaned, then the impurities are added. So that marks the end of our lesson. We'll continue with 
kinetic theory of matter in the other lesson. Uh, thank you for coming with me to the end of the lesson.